Welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming Using Scala. There is one more kind of new topic that we want to look at uh, with the in, under the heading of functions. And this is something called a function literal. So you should remember from uh, in chapter three, we talked about literals as being kind of the uh, the simplest, most straightforward uh, things that have a value to them. Um, so for example, five is an integer literal and 6.2 or 7.23 is a double literal. When you put something in double quotes, you get a string literal. When you put a single character in uh, inside of single quotes, you get a care literal. There is also literals for true and false, the Boolean values. Okay, so um, the term literal just means that you are able to uh, type in and directly create an object uh, with a particular value. The fact that Scala has support for the functional programming style uh, really means that it's beneficial to be able to type in functions using a short syntax. And so we refer to this as function literals. Now we've seen how we can use def to create a function that has a name. Doing something like that. Okay. Um, the literal sin, but this is, so this is giving a, creating a named function, not using a function literal. There are two syntaxes for creating function literals. The first of which, uh, and kind of the normal one, uses a symbol that we read as rocket. It's a, an arrow that points to the right that's made out of an equal sign and a greater than. And the syntax for these uh, function literals is that you have an argument list. So um, let's say x is a double. And then a rocket. And then what you're doing with x. And so this gives us back a result, which is of type double double and it's equal to a function. And it gave it the name res5. And you would expect if we have a function called res5, we should be able to pass it a value and it gives us back something. And that, that works just, uh, just the way you would expect it to. Now, you could also give this a name. Um, how about I call it f2? By using a val and give, creating a normal variable that refers to this function literal which has the type double double. Um, so this is a, uh, you know, this is your basic syntax for a function literal that has just one argument. We could also have a function that takes two arguments. Okay, um, and we could call it in the way that you would expect here. Turns out that most of the times when you use function literals, you will wind up being able to leave off these types here. Now I can't in this usage, uh, because it turns out that this usage right here is, is not the standard one. We will see function literals a lot more in, uh, in well, We'll see them some in the next chapter and then a lot more in the chapter after that. And in general, you will not have to uh, type the, to provide the types to Scala because it will be able to figure them out. Uh, in addition, when we get to, to that point, we can introduce the shorter uh, syntax for function literals as well. Now, why do you need function literals? Uh, after all, we can define these functions like this just fine. The idea of function literals really comes, uh, really becomes significant when you want to uh, use what are called higher order functions. 
Now a higher order function is a function that either takes functions as arguments or returns functions. So it's a function that plays with functions, which is why it's referred to as a higher order function. The simplest higher order function that you might be able to think of is a composition. So if we had two functions f and g, which both take one argument, so let's say we'll come back up here and we will just rename f to be x squared and we can create g as x plus 5. Okay. So f of 3 is 9 and g of 3 is 8 and you can do function composition. So f of g of 3 is 8 and then pass to the square function which gives you back 64. Okay, so this is a standard notion it's called composition and we could define our, our own compose. Turns out there actually is one built in you can do f dot compose g and let's say that h equals that um, and then if I do h of 3 it's the 64 that we had before but I want to write my own function for doing compose. So I want to write compose and it needs to take two arguments actually I'll just call them f and g. Um, now the this is where things get interesting. I need to specify the type of this function f and the REPL has been telling us something about this right here. You can specify a function type by using the rocket. So, and it, you can put parentheses around here. Turns out for, um, even for the, the declarations, if you don't need the colon and you only have a single argument, you can leave off the parentheses. Also for types, if you only have a single one, you can leave off the parentheses. If you had multiple arguments, you would have to include the parentheses. But we don't here. So f is a, I want one function that takes a double and returns a double. And then I want to have another function that takes a double and returns a double. And I want this to give me back a function that takes a double and returns a double. Okay. And what does this look like? Well, it turns out that it is as simple as um, as doing well we could do f dot compose of g kind of that feels like um, cheating though how about we return a function of x is a double that is f of g of x okay. because that's what we really want this to be and so now we've defined compose and it takes a uh, function f and a function g and it gives us back a function that goes from double to double. And now we can define another h as using our compose on f and g. And it gives us back this new h. And if we call it on 3, we get 64. Okay, so this compose here is an example of a higher order function because the things that we're passing in are functions and it gives us back functions. Now I have to admit this is a topic that often uh, causes students brains to explode. Uh, when you start talking about higher order functions you have to start thinking much more deeply because this is something that you're not used to from math. The idea that f of x equals x squared, well that was, or in Scala version, x times x, um, that is something that you are familiar with. And it's possible that you've seen composition in math classes before, but you really haven't talked that much, most likely, about having functions that take functions and give you back functions. That's just not something that, that is uh, considered in in the standard curriculum. Uh, it's kind of a, a higher higher level thing to think about, but it winds up being remarkably powerful. So I uh, wanted to introduce it here because we will be coming back and seeing these things again and we will be using these higher order functions inside of the, the libraries of Scala 
to to allow us to to say very powerful things um, in a short in a small number of characters. So that's it for this video. You should try you know building some own uh, some of your own other higher order functions uh, you know, like this, and instead of doing composition, see what else you could do to, to possibly combine functions, or maybe you take one function and you alter it, so you make it so it's applied multiple times or, or whatever. You should play around with that and see uh, what happens.